a video of six minutes. So there are lots of things that you're going to have to change from like your usual, I'm going to write a short story idea to something completely different. But the elements are the same, okay? So you have a plot line here. Let's review the elements of any good story, whether it be a short story, a novel, or even a six minute movie. Okay. So you have here your plot line. All right. And the exposition, which in your six minute video may be fairly short. That's okay. You want to establish some sort of setting and characters, okay? We're just going to touch on all of these and we'll come back and talk about how they apply to actually a video. All right, you must have some sort of conflict and in a six minute video that had better come out pretty quickly. Otherwise, you only have six minutes. How long can you fiddle around and not have a conflict, right? Then from there, the tension will rise and you'll have your, what they call the rising action. Lots of things can happen there. This is usually like the most, the, the lengthiest part of your story, okay? Then you have your climax in which you solved whatever it was, was your main conflict. You only have a six minute video. You're not gonna have like multi-layers of conflict. You're probably just gonna have one central conflict. Then you're gonna tie up your loose ends and have your happily ever after resolution. Think about it, boom, you're all done. Or have to be original, or can it be based off of something else? I believe it should be original, yes? It doesn't matter, or a favorite book, you could do a book trailer. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. So if it's something that you're already making, like you know from a different story, you can easily turn it into a six minute video, but here are some things that are gonna be different. So if you go to your plot line here, all right, you have some elements that you need to establish right away in your exposition. Okay, so you have a six minute video and it's visual. So think about some different things that you're gonna do to make your setting, uh, what's the word? I don't know, knowable? That's not a word, but still. Right away, what kind of things are you gonna do in your first shot to make your setting like, bam, there's my setting? They put all the people in the setting. <coughs> You put some characters in your setting? Yes. Okay. How should the characters be dressed? In their formal attire. Okay. So here you're going to have, in your video, you're going to have uh, costumes. What do the costumes do for your character? They turn them into another character and make them look like plants. So you're, you don't have time to like round out your characters and be like, this is a great big wonderful round character. You gotta do this fast. So, costumes matter. They can establish things like attitude of characters, maybe age, maybe things like, I don't know, uh, oh, economic status. I mean, U-C-O-N-O-M-I-C. Economic status or whatever. They can establish time period. And if you don't do that really fast, you only have six minutes, then you're gonna spend a whole lot of your time explaining, oh, these are my characters and this is my setting, when really it should just be like evident. Hey, this is who I am. My outfit says so. My setting says so. Okay, so you have costumes, you have also props. You're gonna have to really, really work on having costuming and props, like right away from the beginning for your for your video, because otherwise the, the, a lot of the meaning is gonna get lost. Do you need some papers? Are you staying? What's happening? Yeah, I'm staying. Okay, I can get that for you. It's all good. I think he needs a writing utensil though. I don't know what happened to this. They went away. <laughs> We've lost the pen. All right, so right away, you need to work on how is this visually gonna look? Do I have costumes? Do I have props so that right away I know when and where this is happening and who my characters are and what kind of people or animals or whatever they happen to be are. Right away, six minutes is gonna go fast. Okay, questions about your exposition? Okay, can your conflict do you think happen like almost right away?
Like, boom, there's a dead body. Oh no, what happened? Totally. And so sometimes, I know that this seems misleading, but sometimes your exposition and your conflict can happen all at the same time. Especially if you're working really, really quickly, you may have the conflict happening within the exposition. You're establishing characters, you're establishing setting, and oh, bam, you have a conflict all in the same scene. And that's going to escalate really rapidly, and that's cool because then all of a sudden you have interest, right? People are going to go, oh, oh, that's amazing. I want to keep watching the six minute video right now. Make sense? Questions so far? No questions? Okay. Moving on then, your conflict has got to be a problem. I'll give you a story that has no conflict. It goes like this. Once upon a time, Mrs. Trandall went to the store and she bought milk and she paid for it and then she went home. Great story, huh? Boring. It's super boring because there's no conflict. <laughs> All right? I'll tell you a different one that has a conflict. Once upon a time, Mrs. Trandall went to Walmart. She bought some milk. The cashier at Walmart dropped the milk. Mrs. Trandall was bathed in milk at the Walmart. <laughs> this really happened. It was very embarrassing. It's like, not good. And Mrs. Trandall had to go home soaked in milk from Walmart. Mrs. Trandall is now a great man at Walmart. <laughs> and Mrs. Trandall was killed in Walmart. No. But you can see that there's a big difference between having no conflict and having a conflict. So your conflict is super important to your story. It makes or breaks your story. If your conflict is something kind of droll, like, oh, Mrs. Trandall got soaked in milk at Walmart, well, that's not very exciting. I get that. You might need to brush it up a little bit. But I don't know if you're going to do some sort of like mystery story, or if you're going to do a funny story, or if you're going to do like a touching heart felt story. It doesn't really matter. All of those have conflicts. They're just different kinds of conflict. So right away, you need to be thinking, what is my story like, and what kind of conflict would there naturally be? So let's do a little brainstorming here. Let's say I'm going to write a mystery story. What kind of conflict can I have? Somebody dies. What, besides death, what kind of conflict could I have in a mystery story? Somebody gets kidnapped. Kidnapping? Somebody else. Again, the death? Somebody gets turned into a bug. Uh, well, that would be more sci-fi, but I get what you're saying. Or you a rock. Yes, there could, it's like, you know, some of those stories that you watch on TV where there's some sort of mystery that needs to be solved. What are, somebody steals something, there's a weird illness. It could be just about anything. All right, what if you have a happy story? Maybe a romantic story. What's love always your conflict? Love, love, triangle. love triangle, yes. Generally some sort of really bad misunderstanding, right? Yeah, yeah you're like, I thought you didn't like this and you'd like that. Oh, just, you know, nonsense, basically. <laughs> you can tell how I feel about romantic stories. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Outside of Pride and Prejudice, there are no good ones. Um, let's see, what else? <laughs> If, what if I have a, well, what if I have like a sci-fi theme? What would that conflict look like? Yes, aliens, yes, we find the aliens, and maybe that's great, and maybe that's a great. It could be really, either way. Um, what was over here? Something? Gover oh, dystopian. Oh, we love a dystopian. Yes, the government tells you stuff like, can't wear purple shoes on Thursday, and now you have to fight the government, because obviously. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so your conflict today vary depending on how you want your story to be. You might have a nice, happy story, in which case your conflict will be different than if you have a mystery story. Alright, now the rise to action is going to be the bulk of your story. This is where your conflict Whatever it happens to be, it, it's not going to be easily solved. There has to be some tension. It might be like almost solved, and then oh, way far from being solved, and then pretty close to being solved. And so actually, if we were to draw this more realistically, your rising action should almost be like this. Because what creates tension is the possibility that it might work out, and then oh, not so much. And then oh, maybe it will work out. Oh, not so much. So it's like those silly romantic movies that some of you watch. <laughs> so much opinion is true. Cough, cough, Twilight, cough, 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 cough. So much salt. 
You're, you're going, you're going, oh, oh, maybe they'll just get back together and maybe they'll just finally tell each other the truth, which is most of those stories. They just lie to each other. So, oh, we'll tell each other the truth. And then, of course, it never happens. And then you back off again. And then you get closer. Oh, maybe they And then back off. So your rising action might be more like a jaggedy line. And draw that out as long as possible. As long as possible. This is probably going to be the bulk of your story. Draw that out so that you have a lot of like, oh, maybe it'll work out. Oh, not so much. Oh, look, there's the aliens. Maybe they're nice. Oh, not so much. You know. So make sure that you work on that a lot. Okay. Then at some point you have to solve your problem. Yeah. Oh man. You gotta solve the problem. At some point, you know, the Titanic sinks, and then you can solve your problem. Um, then your falling action might be very short. I mean, we read a story just recently in LA 10. You guys probably remember the monkey's paw story. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the resolution, the falling action, the resolution is just kind of all like, bam, there it is. And then it's done. And you're like, what happened? And that might be how your film is, because it's only going to be six minutes. So maybe it's going to end real suddenly. Conflict is taken care of. And then just kind of real sudden, but make sure of this. You tie up your loose ends like a happy little Christmas bow. Don't leave any like, well, what happened to so-and-so? Bob at the beginning, and we get to the end, and what happened to Bob? He went out for a jug of milk, and he never came back. What happened? Don't leave some loose ends, because that's going to be silly. <laughs> Are you making a sequel? <laughs> you have to, if you're going to make a sequel, have the overall intent to make a sequel. I mean, you know, you have to kind of plan for that. And your resolution may not even be a happily ever after. I was just kind of keep this in my terminology because happily ever after is kind of one of those things that some of those stories end like, but some of them end badly. Or suddenly, like the monkey's paw, where, uh, just to fill you guys in if you've not read it, it's a story about this little magical paw thing. It's a monkey's paw. I mean, that's what I call that. I know. Spoiler. <laughs> and uh, it's it, you get three wishes, okay? But the wishes never work out. And even the guy who brings it to this family right away, he's like, "Listen, you know, pretty much, you shouldn't use this. It's not gonna work out. It's not gonna work out like you think it is." So anyway, needless to say, the people wish on it anyway, which is generally what happens. In and it gets to the end, and his, their son dies, and he comes back as sort of like this zombie-like character. You'd enjoy that, right? And so in the last moments of the story, there's this knock at the door. You know it's Zombie Herbert. That's his name. He's, well, his name isn't Zombie Herbert. It's just Herbert. <laughs> and so he, he goes, knock on the door. And the mom was like, oh, here's my boy. I love him. And of course, you know he's going to be a zombie, so that's not going to work. So the dad wishes for the third wish. And it never says, but it's, you know, that he goes away. And so they open the door and then that's it. And that's basically the end of the story. Oh, third wish happens, they open the door, zombie here gone. Conflict, solved, climax, done, and then basically that's it. It just ends. And the kids are always reading it like, really? And that just, what, huh? And then they, they're kind of almost shocked, which is okay. That's okay to leave your audience like, oh, wow, I can't believe that just happened. Crash and burn, right? Then that's cool. Um, okay, so plot line. Questions on plot line? No? Okay. Do you all have ideas right now of stuff you want to do, or are you basically just going to go? I already have an idea. He has an idea. Thanks for the grammar. Welcome. You're always welcome. <laughs> That find your own way home, kid. <laughs> Do you have an idea already? Uh, yes, I have an idea Death. already. Death. 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 Oh, Death. that's yes. Well, we might want to work something around that. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't have any hard and fast ideas right now, save this. This is where you want to put your ideas when you have them. But you have this lovely blank side. Where you might brainstorm things. Okay, so we're going to take a five minute pause and brainstorm. So pause and brainstorm with your table partners. If you don't have table partners, find some partners or go to a table with partners. And think about what kind of story you want to do and so what kind of 
things you're going to want to have, like what's your problem going to be, maybe what your characters might look like, that kind of thing. Like a five minute, just chat it out, and you can... <laughs> okay, once you have a solid plan, right, it's time to storyboard it. Now, I have done this same idea with a number of things. Post-it notes work pretty well, you know? Um, or, if your story is kind of long and has many scenes, you might just have a whole bunch of these and just keep going and going and going. Okay, so what is this for? Right, so you're going to pretend that each of these squares is like a scene. So you like, because this is going to be a video, you want to be able to see what's happening in this box. So let's like say, for example, this would be your opening shot. All right, your opening shot go back to this, should it display some of these things? Setting characters, like right away, bam. Look, setting and characters. So envision your opening shot. You might do a little sketch. I don't know how good you are at drawing. I'm terrible. I'm the worst drawer ever. <coughs> I drew a dragon the other day on the board. It looked like a chicken. It was bad. Okay. I'm not much better mom. I know, hereditary is not it terrible. So you're also, when drawing, and it might be a lot of stick figures, and that's fine. That's what I do. You then, you want to write down kind of what's happening in the picture, okay? Maybe if you have some great ideas for like a dialogue, something that your characters are going to say, then you write that down here, and you just kind of go on in time. It's like a timeline. First shot, second shot, third shot, etc., etc., etc. If something changes, then you want to make a new little box for it, okay? So let's say if the first one has my opening scene, all right, my setting, here's a character, then another character comes in, I'm probably gonna move over to my next box. Oh, now I have a new character, so now what's happening in that scene, and et cetera, et cetera, okay? If you were making a whole movie for realsies, you know, like big, you know, blockbuster Steven Spielberg, type of thing, they, they seriously do this, that they black it out, like every scene and where, you know, what's happening in the dialogue, all right? So this is like a real life thing, this is what they do, maybe not on paper with little squares, you know, they probably have fancy things for that, but um, this is going to help to keep you organized so you know what's happening now and next and next. Now, when you get this all figured out, okay, I want this shot, I don't want it to look like this, and you're gonna say this right now, and blah, 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 blah. Then for, this is your roadmap for when you film. So then, you have this, you have the characters, you're all ready, you have costumes, and then you start shooting. Okay, first guys, we need this shot, and we run this shot, and then we're gonna run this next shot, and you could skip around. You know that a lot of films and shows, they don't film them in the order that they show you on the movie. They skip around. So maybe they have to film something like, I don't know, at the end first, and then they have to come back. That's okay, because you're going to be putting this together, right, with some fancy dancy software. Woo wee! That'll be exciting. All right, so make sure that you're just covering everything on your plan. It doesn't have to be in the same order. If you have a particularly difficult one that's going to take a little bit more time and effort, maybe save that for later. Start with the easy ones. If you have characters who can't show up on one day, oh, I have five characters and four of them can't show up on Saturday and I wanted to do these scenes, just do different ones that maybe they're not in. Does that make sense? That means you're the only one in the scene. Well, then that might, you might have a scene like that. So maybe you have five characters and two of them aren't there today, but you have a, char a scene where three of them are in it, so you shoot that one. Does that make sense? Okay, so what should you do now? If you have a solid plan, start thinking about how you want your story to go together. All right? Don't necessarily fill this out right away, but this is kind of your visual. Here's what I would do. You probably will want notebook paper. Do you have notebook paper? I should have brought some. Probably. Yeah. Um, on a piece of paper somewhere. Oh, look, little children. On a piece of paper someplace, you're going to want to re 
really get an idea of what your whole story is. Like right now you have a good plan. I mean, if you're working on a good plan, but you need to script it out. Okay, so let's talk about script. We really should have printed out a script thing. Okay. Who's been in a play before? Anybody? Me. Okay. So you know how it is when you're in a play. No. No. I've never been I've in a never, play before. I've never been in a single play before. <coughs> I've never been in a single play before. I don't even know what a play is. 10 out of 10. Oh. Yeah. And so. My two characters in my play. Very important. You always have Sally. Those are very generic names. I know, aren't they? I'm not very inventive. So when you're thinking about what your characters are going to say, if they're going to say words, okay, you're going to want to write out your script kind of like this, where you have the person who's speaking, the character, right, the character name, and then what they're going to say. So let's say Bob says, um, uh, hola. Bob is Spanish. I don't know if you noticed that with his name. Put an accent on there. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> his name is Roberto. It Roberto. is Roberto. Thank you. So Bob says, hola. Okay. But as Bob says this, his stage directions are to God, wave. To oh so hate that. <laughs> And so, do you see how I put my stage directions in parentheses? Yes. Why is that important, do you think? Because it's not something they're going to say. Yeah, because so Bob's not going to be like, hola, waves at Sally. <laughs> Very awkward. So make sure that if you have directions for how your character should act, and I recommend that you do, because otherwise, how are people going to know what to do, right? That you put that in parentheses. Put what they're going to say after their name, and then parentheses. So then Sally says back, she says, I don't speak Spanish. Of course not. And then she drops <laughs> dead. Okay. She's That's the mystery. <laughs> How did she die? Why did, why did Sally die? Because she didn't speak Spanish. But as she, after she says that, she frowns and walks away. Bob gave her a piercing glare. You see? And now we have a story. Well, now not only do we have a problem, Bob and Sally can't speak to each other. But there is a falling love affair. I can feel it. So, anyway. Uh, now, what if I wanted to have them do some action before they spoke? Is it okay for me to switch this up and put these? stage directions like first and then, or what if they only have action? Is it okay for them to just have stage directions? Yeah. And then not say things? Yeah. Sally's a mime. She doesn't speak, so she just does this. That's fine. So the next step, so you have your plot line, you've got, got your story figured out. The next step is to write your script and sort of simultaneously Kind of at the same time, you need to be thinking about how your shots are going to go. This isn't like step one, step two, step three, exactly. A lot of this has to happen at the same time. Okay? Questions so far? I feel like that's a lot of information. <coughs> no. No, you got this? Okay, what if... I need some backstory. I need some narration in my plan here. Is it okay to write that out in my script? Absolutely. You can write out whatever you want in your script. So maybe you have to set the scene. Um,
you're going to have a scene. There's a dark alley, and you're going to have a little picture of Bob. You're going to have a little picture of Sally, and then underneath here, you're going to be like, Bob meets Sally in a dark alley. And then the next one, hola, here's Bob. Hola. We get the sombrero, which would lend well to the hola. The sombrero that has a switchblade on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most menacing sombrero ever. And then the next one, you have this with Sally. Does that kind of make sense? Like, it can all kind of work together? <laughs> You're all like, oh, this is overwhelming. Of course it is. You don't just make movies, right? So, thoughts, plans, ideas. I'm not very quiet. This is weird. I teach high school. There's not a lot of quiet. <laughs> you may want, I don't know, and start sketching out your um, script. Thank you. I was like, ah, words. Words are hard. I've already come down with the scene. Okay. Person one goes to the store. Person one buys, buys a candy bar. Person two steals a candy bar. All right. The people, person, persons one and two, exchange threats. They fight. Enter death battle for the two. Death battle. And that comes after the training montage. Death battle of history. Are you are you now working in their group or are you? Oh uh, yes. yes. Have they invited uh, you to their group? We? <laughs> you might have to bring the candy bars. What do you do? Oh, good. good Mom, question. you have the candy bars. Um, all right. We're, not gonna We're gonna talk about that. things like foreshadowing and flashback. We're not gonna... So oh, those of you who are not in like LA 11 probably don't remember that. Foreshadowing is when you leave little clues. Woo! So an example of foreshadowing might be, for example, uh, a person walks into a house, right, and they don't close the door, okay? And you get that in your shot, you know, the fact that the door is still open. All right, and then the person does some things like, I don't know, they do a little laundry or clean out the fridge or some other amazing thing that never happens in my house. <laughs> and then you're still like remembering, oh, there was this clue, the front, or the, not the front, the door, the front door being open. And then the dog gets outside and the dog runs away. Okay, did you see that coming? Yeah. A little bit? Because you saw that there was this little clue? Okay, so foreshadowing is like leaving little clues so that people are like, Oh, I can see that something's coming in my story. I can see that maybe there's going to be, now there's a conflict, right? Because now we have a dog that's lost. And so that can set up your conflict. So using clues can help to get your conflict going. Um, and then the other one is flashback. Flashback is when you go back in time to remember something else. Okay? You ever watch a movie? that has a scene where there's flashback, yeah. where they're like, they go to somebody's memory and sometimes they do weird things, like they kind of make it blurry or whatever, they're like, oh, I remember. Yeah. Or they, maybe they shoot, you know, a whole scene of something that happened before, that's flashback. So can you do that in your movie? Can you have it flashback to something that would help to explain something that happens later on? Yes. Of course. Yeah, so let's say go back to your door left open, the dog escapes example. So if that's your story, maybe you flash back to like the, the moment that you got that dog and like it was a baby puppy and it was so cute and you have this whole scene about how much you love the dog and then you can see why the people are so upset that it's missing and then it kind of like develops your story a little bit. Does that make sense? So you can use flashback to help to develop some of that backstory, which you may 
Okay. Any other questions on something on the chart? Flash forwards? Well, that's the opposite of flashback. It could go way into the future. Not as often used. Okay. But you sometimes you'll have a movie that's filmed like all topsy turvy. Like you'll see the end really first, and then it goes back to the beginning, and you're like, what's happening? And that's sometimes it's cool. I don't know if a six minute video can pull that off, but if you can, great. Thoughts? No? Anything else you want to try, or you just want to have some work time? Work time, please. Work time, please? Yeah. Other people? Okay, hearing no objection, I'm going to say, let's get to work, and if we have specific questions, then we'll go ahead and ask, okay?